Standard of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and Standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. The motif is murder, another adventure of George Valentine. Personal notice, danger's my stock and trade. If you're running a poor last and your whole life depends on your finishing in the money, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Dear Mr. Valentine, enclosed are three $100 bills to arouse your interest and claim your attention. Now, consider my problem. I've committed three murders. The police have seen no connection between the victims. Dr. Douglas Chapin, Stella Tafania, and Otto Pfeiffer. But there is a connection, a theme to these deaths, as definite and perfect as a motif in a work of Wagner. I want you, Mr. Valentine, to provide provide me me with the the appreciation appreciation of of an an intelligent intelligent man and exhilarating knowledge that from now on you'll be an obstacle in my path. I shall phone you at two this afternoon. No signature. Hmm. How thoughtless. What do you make of it, George? I'd say somebody was funning me, Angel, if it weren't for these three century notes. Well, he sounds like a well-educated man. Or a woman, for all we know, but the handwriting's like a child. These names here, they don't ring any bells for me, but they may for Lieutenant Raleigh. And, Brooksy, if we find the three people in this letter in the file for unsolved crimes... There's going to be a refreshing and deadly calm about the good lieutenant. Dr. Douglas Chapin, well-known surgeon. Stella Tafania read the bumps on your head, the lines in your palm, and your future in a crystal ball. And Otto Pfeiffer, honest, hard-working diamond cutter. Now, find me a motif in that combination, Valentine, and I'll eat it. Well, let's skip that for a minute, Lieutenant. The fact remains that whoever wrote this letter knew about these crimes. And they weren't exactly front-page stuff. You yourself said that Otto Pfeiffer's name never even got into the newspaper. Missing persons is working on that, Miss Brooks. The man simply disappeared. Yeah, but our correspondent assures us it was murder, wherever the body might be. Dr. Chapin's death was tagged as a suicide or an accident. Take your choice. He was taking a smoke up on the roof of St. Mary's Hospital after an operation. The next thing, they were picking him up off the street. Which leaves us with only one murder as such. Yeah. Stella Tofania. Well, that crazy gypsy probably told one of her ignorant, superstitious customers something he didn't want to hear, and he beat her brains out in the back of the store. But you still don't know who it was. Unfortunately, no. Well, then it's possible that the three were murdered by the same person for... Well, for reasons we don't know yet. Uh Uh-huh. And he's paying good money to you to try and catch him. (sighs) Well, maybe we're dealing with the loony here, but I can't take any chances. Now, I don't want to sound like an old killjoy, Riley, but this character isn't stupid. I doubt if he's going to let his telephone call be traced. Well, just the same, I'm going to set things up with the telephone company. I'm going to have another phone put in your office and trust the luck. Okay. Two o'clock then, Lieutenant. Now, have you got everything straight, Miss Brooks? Uh Uh-huh. All I do is get the special operator on this phone as soon as the call comes through to George. Then if he can hold the call long enough to be traced, I flash the information to headquarters on this emergency. Yes. And a whole fleet of squad cars will be at the address wherever it is in a matter of minutes. Well, it's almost two now, Lieutenant. Now, look, Valentine, when you get on the phone, wind up and talk as long as you can. Say anything, even if you have to stutter, but keep the conversation rolling, see? (laughs) Right on the button. All right, Miss Brooks. I've got it, Lieutenant. Hello? Valentine. Hey, operator, you can start working on the call. Uh-huh. Horse. What can I do for you? Uh, suppose you tell me what this is all about. You sound as though you know who this is. Yeah, you're very punctual. Now about that letter. Never mind that. Let me do the talking. I know you're trying to trace the number I'm calling from. Would that be located at the state hospital for the insane? I also know the shortest time it takes the operator to track down any number. You can be sure I'll hang up before then. What else do you know that's interesting, Rollo? Have you read any good books lately? Yes, there is something else I know. You've also got a police lieutenant in your office. (laughs) You're all right, Buster. It's going to be fun playing with you. Yes, it is a game, isn't it? And I welcome the odds against me. It'll make the triumph completely satisfying, like the final flourish of a great symphony. 
Assuming you did kill those three people, friend, you mean you're going to continue on your merry way? Let's leave idle conversation for another time. Now listen, tomorrow I'm going to kill again. And neither you nor the police shall be able to stop me. Would you mind repeating that? You heard me. I'm even going to give you the name of the victim. She is Honey Evans, a model living at the Marlborough Apartments on Weldon Boulevard. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Tell me something. How do you pick out your people? What have you got against this girl? What did you have against the others when... Hung up. Uh, all right, Miss Brooks, you can forget it. Well, Valentine, what do you say? The gentleman on the other end of the line wants us to be sure and keep tomorrow open. He'd like the pleasure of our company at a murder. It's all right if I take in my morning milk, isn't it, Mr. Valentine? Uh, sure, Miss Evans. Here, I'll get it for you. Hmm. Thanks. Isn't it rather silly, you and the police patrolling this building all on account of a letter from some crackpot? Well, now, wait a minute. You forget I spoke to that crackpot. He mentioned your name with more than morbid delight. Oh. Come in, won't you? Okay. I'm going to be barricaded in my own apartment. I may as well have someone to talk to. Someone uh, interesting. <laughs> Here's your milk. Oh, thanks. Mm, special skim milk. I really hate the stuff, but uh, I have to think of my figure, <laughs> which is the height of irony. Mm? Honey Evans, the girl with the most beautiful hands in the world. My public never gets to see the rest of me in the ad. <laughs> <laughs> Poor public. Mm. Oh, my next door neighbor practices like that for hours. Well, it's one thing you can't blame on Lieutenant Riley. Now, seriously, Mr. Valentine, who'd want to kill me? Well, I haven't an enemy in the world. Haven't you ever heard of people having a compulsion to kill just for the thrill of it? No reason at all. Well, that's what's got to stump, Miss Evans. This man says he has a reason, which applies to you as well as the other three. <laughs> you know, I, I think I'm really beginning to feel a little buttery around the knees about this whole thing. You have a marvelous knack for understatement, Miss Evans. Now, go ahead, have your breakfast. Hey, Lieutenant, I think I'd better check with Miss Evans again. Why, what's the idea? Nobody can get into that apartment without passing us here in the hall. She is beautiful, isn't she, Lieutenant? <laughs> If you keep on being so subtle, Angel, no one will ever know what you're talking about. I merely said that... Uh, wait a minute. And where do you think you're going, Miss Evans? I'm sorry to spoil your fun, Lieutenant Riley, but I've got to go out. My agency just called. Duchess Jewels wants me to model some bracelets for them. That can wait till tomorrow. Oh, no, it can't, Mr. Valentine. I've been waiting ages for this account. It means a great deal to me. Full page ads in all the national magazines. Miss Evans, we can't use force, but I'm telling you And I'm you telling you... you, Lieutenant, that... Oh, George! Oh, I've got it. Miss oh. Evans, what's wrong with oh. this? You better get an ambulance, Riley. This girl is dying. Coroner's report, Ray Cecilia Honey Evans. 14.36 grains of tetric myocide in stomach of deceased. Remaining milk in bottle found to contain nearly eight grains of same. Cause of death beyond doubt. Poison. Hey, quick, Brooksy, the other phone. Get the operator. We can go crazy doing this with every phone call that comes in the office. Yes. Everything went off very nicely, didn't it, Valentine? So well, Rollo, We're that you up. almost made me an accessory. I brought that bottle of milk into the girl's apartment. What an exquisite Philip. I hardly anticipated anything so dramatically appropriate. Now, listen to me, friend. I'm going to get you if I have to crawl into this phone and over every mile of copper wire to where you are. I can appreciate your sense of failure, Valentine. I know what it can do to a person. Keep stalling him, darling. Keep stalling him. Tell me more. More? So you can trace the call? Hardly. Now, let's get on with our game. Hey, I got a surprise for you, Rollo. The next time, you're going to be just another also-ran with a murder rap staring you in the face. You and the police will have to do much better than you did yesterday. Consider how simple it was. 
Having discovered that Miss Evans was the only one in the building who ordered that special brand of skim milk, I found the time and the place to substitute another bottle right outside the Marlborough Apartments when the milkman was making another delivery. I still say you're not going to get away with it, Rollo. Very well. If you're so sure of yourself, maybe I ought to make it more difficult next time. Tomorrow. Tomorrow? Hey, now look, what did these people do to you? Why are you doing this? You can't be so crazy that human life means nothing. Quiet, Valentine. I don't have much time. Tomorrow, someone in the 1200 block on Corona Del Mar Avenue is going to be found dead. That's all I'm going to tell you. Now, let's see how really clever you can be. But, Operator, are you sure? Well, they're still on the phone. Oh, no, we're not, Brooks. You can hang up now. Well, I guess you're right, Operator. Thanks. George, he must be timing himself with a stopwatch. He knows just how far he can go. That time they almost traced the exchange he was calling for. I know, I know, I know. Well, what gives with Rollo now? Murder. What else? Hello, Lieutenant Riley, please. This is Valentine. Then he's going right on. Yeah, but he's making it a little tougher for us. He's trying to... Oh, yes, Lieutenant. Uh-huh. Just got another call from him. No, no such luck. Well, he's got another shindig scheduled for tomorrow. You, you, will you take it easy, Riley? I've got a hunch that's so crazy it might just work. All I want you to do is let me play it my way. Return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. Anyone who has ever run a vacuum cleaner knows it has to be emptied at regular intervals or it's no go. Same thing holds true for your car's engine. That's why a crankcase drain and a refill with compounded RPM motor oil at regular intervals is so all important. You see, RPM has a special detergent compound that cleans as it lubricates. It controls the harmful wear-causing carbon particles that collect in any engine, prevents them from depositing on and scratching finely polished interior engine parts, and gets rid of them when you have the oil changed. And RPM not only keeps your car's engine cleaner, it fights off corrosion, rust-proofs internal engine parts, and clings to the hot spots left bare and exposed to wear by ordinary motor oils. Next time you ask for motor oil, ask for RPM motor oil. Regular use of RPM means added life for your car's engine. No wonder RPM is first choice in the West. Get it tomorrow at any independent Chevron gas station or standard station where they say and mean we take better care of your car. And now back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. A well-bred, even pleasant voice on the telephone hires you to keep its owner from committing another murder if you can. He actually names his intended victim, and still neither you nor the police can prevent him from striking. Then another call. This time you only get the street block where you can expect mayhem to break out. All of which, if you're anything like George Valentine, suggests something as wild as the whole setup itself. All right, Valentine, you've practically memorized that list, and it better pay off. I had half the men in the department canvassing that neighborhood. And the 1200 block on Corona Del Mar is king size. Yes. And we've got the name of every man, woman, and child, address, occupation, comments. Thanks, Riley. This is really some job we've got handed to us. Okay, okay. So we blanket the whole street with plain clothesmen, but we can't keep people from going to work. We can't check on every delivery man or salesman who wants in or out. We can't... Look, Valentine, will you stop staring at that list? What do you expect to find? The name of the person who's next on Rollo's schedule. I don't see how this can tell you. Riley, while you and the boys cover the block, I'm going to concentrate on one Walter Cluckholm, piano teacher. 1236 Corona Del Mar. I don't want to be an old nosy, but why? And I don't want to raise your hopes too high, Lieutenant. So suppose we just call it a wild stab and see if it works. Murder? Please, young man, I have no time to talk about unimportant things. Your murder, Mr. Cluckhorn. Would you classify that under the heading of trivia? Please, look at what time it is. My pupils will start coming soon. Ah, listen to that. My new piano. 
Never before have I had such an instrument. Yeah, well, that's just swell. But you got to believe me, mister. I didn't come here just to pass the time of day. This man I told you about means business. Young man, I learned to be a fatalist, a philosopher. Three years I was in a concentration camp. And still, here I am. Yeah, yeah. A new life in a new country. A new piano. Plenty of pupils. And anyway, who'd bother killing an old man like me? So, you see... Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. You said this piano was new? How new? This morning they just delivered it. That's why I'm so happy. Take your hands off that thing. Get away. Oh, let go of me. What's the matter with you? Stay where you are, Clacon. Keep your hands off that keyboard. What are you doing, young man? Just having a look inside this piano. Oh, brother. You don't know how lucky you are, Pop. Uh, what, what do you mean? These little wires, this detonator cap. Somehow our unknown playmate found out this was being delivered today and managed to wire it for sound. And I mean sound with a capital boom. I do not understand. Sooner or later you would have hit a certain combination of notes and this whole place would have blown up. You with it. I... I better sit down. The philosopher is not feeling so well. Yeah, very lucky. Both of us. Phew. Move over, Pop. I think I'll sit down, too. Valentine, what is this business about a motif, a theme, and a work of Wagner? Well, my hunch about Cluckhorn wasn't so wild after all. Think back now. A surgeon, a diamond cutter, a gypsy palmist. Now, what's the common denominator for all of them? Well, none that I can see. Hands, Angel, hands. All their lives revolved around hands. Huh? The Wait sensitive minute. fingers of a surgeon. Thousands of dollars depend on the way a diamond cutter handles his mallet on a precious stone. And Stella Tafania made a living reading the palms of people's hands. Sure. And Honey Evans, the model with the most beautiful hands in the world. And Mr. Clucker on the piano teacher, the same thing applies to him. Okay, Valentine, maybe you've got an answer as to why this guy went off. Maybe that's Rollo. I'll get over to the other phone. Don't bother, Brooks. He's too smart for that. Yeah, hello? I underestimated you, Valentine. Let me congratulate you on saving Clucker. Well, thanks, Rollo. However, it introduces a very unpleasant necessity. Meaning? I'll have to figure out details and call you later. But my next move must, unfortunately shatter the beautiful pattern I had all worked out. Yeah? To keep anything from happening to my long-range plan, I'm afraid you must be next, Valentine. Hey, Riley, just what kind of metal pygmies are we? Don't make me answer that now. I don't exactly feel like Einstein. And I feel as confused as a mating moth. Now, look, it takes just so long to trace a telephone call, and Rollo knows that. But we're going to make two parts out of the operation. Huh? The first time he calls, we trace the prefix, the name of the exchange, where the phone is located. And that's all. But an exchange covers a lot of territory, Joe. And he'll never stay on the wire long enough for us to find out the exact number. Yeah, but I'm going to make Rollo call me back a few minutes later, so we can be sure he's using the same phone, or at least a phone in that district. Then all we have to worry about is getting the number. Say, that's an idea. It might work. Ah, but Wait. How do you know for sure he's going to call back? Lieutenant, if I know my customer, I think I have a way. Oh, well, darling, I'm worried. You're going about this as though it were just another case for somebody else. He means to kill you. You know, the same disconcerting thought keeps occurring to me, too, Brooksy. All right, Valentine, you hit on something. But uh, here's what we're going to do. You don't have to bother with that other phone this time, Miss Brooks. But why? I'll rig it up so that any call that comes into this office will flash a red light on the switchboard down at headquarters. We'll work the whole deal out from there. Well, let's save any time, Lieutenant. No, no, but that way we'll be in constant touch with every squad car in the city. And as soon as we find out the exchange, they'll be ordered to converge on that district. Then they can't be more than minutes away from wherever he's phoning. <laughs> Hey, you know, Riley, you and I make a pretty good team. Maybe one of these days I'll join the force and you... Yeah, and I... you do, and I'll... <laughs> uh, well, I gotta get going. I think I smell my fudge burning. All right, Brooksy, if that's Riley, you got the pitch. Operation runaround. Yes, George. But don't play it too big. No. He may get suspicious and hang no. up. Now, go ahead. Okay. George Valentine's office. Oh, Mr. Valentine, please. Oh, well, now, isn't that a shame? Mr. Valentine just stepped out. Oh, well, just a minute, maybe I can get him before he reaches the elevator. Oh, this ought to give us a few seconds. Well, better not make it too long, George. No, I won't, I won't. <laughs> hey, I know a way to waste a couple of seconds. Come here. No. Oh, well, 
wouldn't call that a waste, Donnie. <clears throat> Thanks, Miss Brooks. Hello, Valentine. I thought you'd like to know that I've made up my mind how I'm going to dispose of you. Oh, I'm vaguely interested, Rollo. But this time I'm going to do the talking, and you can hang up whenever you feel like it. But uh, I think you'll stick with me. What's that? I told you once you weren't going to get away with it. Now I'm sure. I know enough about you so I can really grease the skids under you. It's just a matter of time. Oh, come. Why don't you stop whistling in the dark? Let me tell you about yourself, Rollo. I know you're a pianist. Oh. Probably a very well-known artist once. Then something happened to your hands. That's right. Go ahead. Take a look at them. Suddenly you couldn't give any more consents. Your whole life came to an end for you. You had to have your revenge against the world. Stop it. Stop Where it. hands played an important part in anybody's life, you set out to destroy him. You were the one playing the piano in the apartment next door to Honey Evans. Thinking about it now, that was a pathetic performance. And your handwriting, a miserable scrawl. I'm, I'm going to hang up. No, this time I'll hang up. In a few minutes, I expect more information that'll make it easy to put the arm on you. Well, how did you pull all that out of your hat? A little elementary deduction and a generous helping of guesswork. Musical references, motif, Wagner. And he knew enough about Cluckholm's piano to turn it into an atom bomb. Oh, that Brooksy, and he's as mad as a coot. Yes, but will he call you back? If he doesn't, we're right where we started. He's sweating blood, Angel. He's all mixed up. That cookie won't rest till he finds out just how much I do know about him. Attention, all cars. Proceed to district covered by the Wadsworth Exchange. I repeat, Wadsworth, bounded by Elmira, Jensen, and Morton Streets, on the south side of McCary Boulevard, and step on it. That's all. Riley. Okay, Sergeant, let's get going. Wadsworth thinks in the big hunk of the city, Lieutenant. I was thinking of something else. Valentine happens to be in the Wadsworth Exchange. <laughs> told me before. Still, you couldn't resist calling back, could you, Rollo? Merely curious. Now I know it was just rather skillful deduction on your part. You don't actually know too much, and it doesn't alter my decision one bit. Oh, well, that's nice. Let's hear about it. Oh, no. Time is running short again. You know the three minutes it takes to trace a call, but I'm coming to get you, Valentine. Oh, George, I can only take so much suspense. Yeah. Well, we know Riley's got the exchange. But were they able to get the number? A second, one way or the other, makes all the difference. Rollo said he's coming to get me. Oh, darling. Oh, figure of speech, Angel. He likes the elaborate touch, that's all. He wouldn't just walk in here and blow my brains out. Oh. Hey, where's that coming from? The next office. It's... Yeah. The same thing that was being played the morning Honey Evans was killed. But it wasn't played that way. <laughs> This isn't just a coincidence. I'm going to see what this is all about. Get back inside, Valentine. What the... But you... you're the man who has the office next door. Don't try reaching for your gun. You'll have a bullet through you before you can raise a finger. My hands are still good for something. Too bad the young lady has to be here. Now, she'll have to go, too. Wait a minute. Look, you can't... Of course, if one must die, music like that should make it somewhat more acceptable... Valse Triste, played by Gerald Maidens. One of my most famous recordings. Next door, all the time. So that's how you know almost every move I made. Think of all the times you saw my name on the door. Gerald Maidens, concert management. Fifteen years ago, it was Gerald Maidens, promising young pianist. Why should I have had a stupid, reasonless accident? Why couldn't it have happened to someone like the four you know about? That's what's been driving me out of my mind. How do you expect wholesale homicide to change any of that? These hands. These fingers. Long, and you'd imagine sensitive, but they're dead things. Only the faintest trace of feeling left in them. Oh, don't do this, Mr. Martin. The police will understand that you're sick. You don't know what you're doing. My name on the door may not have suggested anything to you, Valentine, but yours did to me. It inspired this little game, but it's all over now. All over for you. Now, over there, both of you. <laughs> You must be needing that. Oh, Riley. Uh, see that he behaves, Sergeant. Oh, Thanks. Lieutenant, do you mind if you kiss a gray-haired old lady? Oh, brother, you must have made it here in nothing flat. <laughs> I was only over on 10th Street when we found out it was the office next to yours. Would 
someone mind turning off that record? Alts triste, the melancholy waltz. It's over now. Did you notice our new neighbor in the next office? Yeah, yes, I did. Uh, Pamela Stodgeworth. Society secretary. Oh. All social functions correctly managed. Mm-hmm. Weddings, especially. Mm-hmm. Well, I had Coke with her down in the drugstore, and, well, Miss Stodgeworth wants to meet you. <laughs> so did the last tenant. Yeah, but in fact, Pamela gets absolutely agog at the very mention of your name. Oh? And why would that be? Well, she thinks if you really got to know her, well... You might start thinking of romance, orange blossoms, old shoes, and a shower of rice. <laughs> oh, Angel, I realize you always have my best interest at heart, uh-huh. but uh, do you really think it would work out? Huh? Why, Pamela is at least 60. <sighs> no comment. If you're a mother, maybe you drive the kids to school every day. Or if you're the breadwinner of the family, maybe you use the car to drive back and forth to work. In either case, you probably run into traffic lights and lots of stop-and-go driving twice a day. And what can be a better feeling than knowing your car will give you steady, dependable performance at all times? Fast starts, steady pickup, or speedy getaways, and extra power for hill climbing. That's the kind of performance you can be sure of when you have a tank full of Chevron Supreme gasoline. For this high-octane gasoline is specially blended and climate-tailored to get command performance out of your car in every driving condition. Its light fractions command fast starts every time you use the starter, and it's perfectly blended to command steady, powerful acceleration whenever you give it the gun. That's why you hear so many motorists saying, Chevron Supreme gasoline keeps my car going steady. Ask for this premium-quality gasoline tomorrow. Get Chevron Supreme at standard stations and at independent Chevron gas stations where they say, and mean, we take better care of your car. Next week, when you tune our way for another adventure of George Valentine, you'll find a very distraught Brooksy waiting by a roadside as... Hey, Brooksy, over here. Oh, George, are you... Have you got that prescription, Brooksy? Let me have it. Here, but what... Now, get inside and take the wheel. I can't. Oh, George, you know you're scaring me to death, don't you? Well, that makes a couple of scared people. Let's just hope this stuff works or you'll be looking for a new boss. Now, step on it. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and Standard stations throughout the West. Let George Do It stars Robert Bailey as George with Francis Robinson as Claire. Wally Mayer appears as Lieutenant Riley. Tonight's story was written by David Victor and Herbert Little Jr. and directed by Don Clark. Also heard in the cast were Ed Begley as the murderer, Mary Ship as Honey, and Herbert Butterfield as Cluckholm. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.